Andrew, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Right. I guess we'll uh, continue with the subject of MOOCs and you know, you're on a great panel with some uh, very eminent and prominent people talking about it. Uh, as you were mentioning earlier, a MOOCs you know, uh, is, is beyond uh, the scope of any big institution now. It's going worldwide. It's going to have an impact. So I wanted to have your take on MOOCs. Sure. So, so the, where, where are MOOCs going? I guess it was um, uh, two years ago, the thing that really changed was when we developed the technology to enable one professor to teach not just 100 students, but 100,000 students. And that's how we, I guess, launched the MOOC movement out of Stanford. And when the uh, technology exists for this to happen, it really changes the economics of higher education. There's still a large cost to creating the costs upfront once, but once you've done that, the incremental cost of signing up one more student is nearly zero. And that's what lets us give away this amazing content for free. So I think that MOOCs will have an um, uh, uh, impact on maybe two large categories of people. First, um, and the group we're having the biggest impact on is working professionals. Um, I think that uh, when you think, think about the typical Coursera student is not an 18 to 21 year old student, instead it's someone in their 20s and 30s with a bachelor's degree. I think that in today's rapidly changing world, the half-life of knowledge is decreasing and all of us need regular infusions of knowledge in order to stay current. And the convenience of MOOCs is bringing many working adults back into the educational system. A second category that we hope to serve uh, is um, uh, students in developing economies, including India, China, uh, that just don't have great access to, 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 to a good education. And as I think uh, Professor Deepak was saying earlier, I think that there are these very interesting disaggregated models of education where one great university, maybe a Stanford or a Princeton or maybe an IIT Delhi, can uh, create online course content that can then be served to students worldwide, maybe for free, but then uh, where local students can also come into the classroom to have discussions. It's called blended learning and get a good experience of fantastic content as well as the in-person interactions, which we believe are still really important for students to succeed today. So I wanted to uh, ask you this, when you look at India and China, let's take that example, the cultures are very different. Mm -hmm. The content is king, so they want to hold it very dear to them. They don't want to let it go for free. If uh, US universities have started this initiative, it's, it's, so they're happy to take it, but they're not willing to share theirs. How do you think we can bring them to the fold where you know, sharing is, is, is all about participating in a broader economy? You know, uh, I'm actually finding that universities worldwide, including uh, developing economies, are quite willing to share content. Um, uh, to many universities, what we're seeing, I guess I spent a lot of time in China, what we're seeing is that uh, today there are a lot of students from China and India taking, let's call them American or European MOOCs. What I would like to see in the future is for an equal number of students in the US to take MOOCs offered by Indian or Chinese universities and, to, uh, and, and for students worldwide to learn from the best universities worldwide. And I think the whole planet will be better for it. Um, today we do have substantially more MOOCs taught by American than Chinese or Indian universities, but um, I would really like to uh, work with Indian and Chinese universities to, to increase their participation because I think a great education, great teaching is found in many places and the world will be stronger if we have more American students learning from Indian and Chinese universities. What are your thoughts on measuring the impact, both in terms of the social impact and, and ROI? on the application of MOOCs? So uh, anecdotally, many students are listing their resume, listing their Coursera MOOCs on their resume and successfully using it to find better professional or educational opportunities. Um, we're actually getting inbound requests from uh, college admissions offices today that are seeing many high school students list MOOCs on their college applications and college admissions offices are taking these MOOCs seriously as, a, as an important factor. Um, but the even bigger effect is working professionals. You know, pe maybe people like us that can list MOOCs on a resume and use them as, as a valuable credential. Uh, one thing I'd really like to happen is, you know, education is about, uh, education is about a lot of things. It's about civic engagement, it's about um, citizenship, it's about our growth as individuals. But I think an education is also about jobs. And I think um, academic, a lot of economic development, especially in de developing economies, I really believe in economic development through jobs. So one thing I would really like to see happen is a year or two from now, I hope that there will be a lower income individual, uh, maybe right here in Houston, or maybe in India, maybe in China. I want that lower income individual to be able to sign up for a dozen Coursera MOOCs. They'll have to work really hard to finish these courses because these are serious university courses, but I want that person to be able to take their MOOCs, 
list it in their resume and use it to find a better job and earn a livelihood for themselves and their family. Uh, because if we could do that, if we can give anyone a shot at a better job, that means we can give everyone a shot at the middle class. Um, I think this country, the US, certainly needs that. I think India, China, countries in Europe, Russia, probably need it, some of them even more. But I think that we can give everyone a shot at the middle class. Um, I think we can, we can uplift the human race and, and just change the way the planet is run. All right. On that note, thank you so much. Appreciate thank you. It. Thank you.